this beautiful place. You know, in the beginning of Genesis, they talk about uh, the separating of the firmament. It's almost too bad that most chapels don't have a skyline. It's a wonderful place to worship, to be out in God's creation. We're all maybe have that sense that they belong, that they're invited. At St. Mary's Road United Church, we are proudly an affirming ministry, and we celebrate the diversity in which God has created. We love the fact that God has created us with different gender identities and sexual orientation. That the, the Word of God has come to us in, in different creeds. Or no creed. In the science itself. We love that we grow to different ages and have different abilities. This is all part of God's beautiful creation, including animals that are not human. So I'm grateful to see some of God's creation and have a special, special bond with you here today. We also gather on this space, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe of Treaty 1 and the homeland of the Red River Métis Nation. We are called to be a grateful people. Let us be grateful. Oh, man. Oh, hello. Now it's your turn. Now it's your turn. Now, this is specifically for our, our four-legged friends. I think we only have four-legged friends here. You can point it out if we have three-legged friends or, um, or other. God created all kinds of creatures, some with wings, some with tails, some with feathers, some with nails, some with two legs, some with four. Yep. Some who crawl and some who snore. God created us to be friends. We learn from our furry, feathered, fine friends to obey and to follow. We follow the way of Jesus. We learn from our animal friends to be joyful, to welcome, and be thankful for our food. The way of Jesus. The way of Jesus teaches us to welcome all, all God's children and bless our meals. And so we also learn to trust our, from our animal friends, uh, learn to trust and to wait. Because sometimes the answer to our prayers takes time. We learn from our animal friends how to receive love and how to give love. Today we ask God's special blessing and give thanks to our animal friends. We pray a blessing for their health and their strength I ask this in the name of Jesus. And gathered with our animal friends, we pray for all of God's wondrous creation. Amen. And now, while you noodle, I'm going to go around and bless animals.
joy that's growing deep inside of me. Every time I see you, all your goodness shines through. I can feel this God's love rising up in me. scripture passage that I chose for this day uh, is comes after the most known passage of the New Testament which is John 316 a little bit uh, it's a, and that takes place in a, in 
exchange between Jesus and another teacher of the law, Nicodemus. Nicodemus. Sorry, I can hear myself. I don't know why other people are having troubles. I haven't had to do this live in a long time. There's my excuse. So, this passage has been on my mind, and maybe you'll, you'll understand why in a minute. So, this is after Jesus has had that exchange with Nicodemus. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out to the Judean countryside, where they spent some time, and Jesus baptized now John was also baptizing. Because there was plenty of water and people were coming from all over to be baptized. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and uh, another, this, this certain rabbi. And Jesus, they, these disciples came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you the, on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about? Well, that man is baptizing and everyone is going to him. To this, John the Baptist replied, A man can receive only what is given from them. It was given from heaven. You yourself can testify that I said that. I am not the Messiah, but I am sent ahead. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and is now complete. The one you are speaking of? He must increase and become greater and I must become less. The one who comes from above is above. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. A couple other things that had been on my mind is uh, a quote that is on Stephen Colbert's uh, desk. Joy is the infallible sign of God's existence. And the other is uh, the first question in the Shorter Cate Westminster Catechism. What is the chief end, the purpose of humanity? Our reason, our purpose is to glorify God and enjoy God forever. So what happened this past Thursday? Do you remember? It wasn't that long ago. It was just a few days. I haven't had a congregation in a long time. So if you could just shout out an answer, that would be helpful. Truth and Reconciliation. Truth and Reconciliation, National. Yeah. It's a day of Truth and Reconciliation. It was also uh, Orange Shirt Day for some. Every Child Matters. Did any of you observe that day? Yeah. Did you have an orange shirt? You had an orange shirt. You know, so I don't need to necessarily repeat the story in full, but uh, Phil Phyllis uh, Webstad, um, this, the orange shirt comes from the fact that when she was uh, a little girl, I think six years old, um, and was excited to go to school, uh, and on before she left, she had gone shopping with her grandmother, who bought her an orange shirt, and when she arrived at the residential school, it was taken from her, along with other, uh, uh, other things from her. And so the wearing of the orange shirt is... Uh, an acknowledgement of that pain and suffering uh, that is indicative of, of the many, uh, hundreds of thousands, who were part of this residential school program over uh, many, many decades. 
and it had me thinking about when I was in elementary school. I received uh, a gift from my grandma, uh, my nana, and it was, I believe, from, from Sri Lanka. I, I, I think it was from Sri Lanka. I'm not entirely sure, but it was this beautiful uh, uh, green kind of tie-dyed shirt with lots of, lots of different uh, colors on it and had this incredible embroidery. It was garish. Uh, I wore that shirt to school until the armpits ripped. I loved that shirt. And it reflected on the fact that uh, the worst that I would have gotten at school was being made fun of with a, to have a shirt with a hole in it. Definitely didn't have teachers taking it away from me. I also got to go back to my family at the end of the day. Struggling to know exactly what it is to be an ally for many different things in this time, in this day and age of truth, as we move towards reconciliation. And it had me thinking about John the Baptist, where John the Baptist says, "He must increase, that I may, and I may, di that he may uh, be greater." and I must decrease. And that role of us that are allies, whether it is for LGBTQ uh, rights and recognition, especially now for trans individuals, or whether it is for our uh, neighbors who are indigenous, and how to be supportive of hearing their truth and their voice and listening for the gospel that comes from them rather than having a pulpit. John didn't say he must increase and I must disappear. He said he must increase and I need to decrease. I feel like important part of the gospel for for us allies right now those of us who are allies is to recognize the privileges that we've had for most of our life and how our voice because of that is often uh, sought and we have power in that and we have that opportunity to find ways of amplifying and listening to others and the wisdom that comes and is born from their experience. Amen. For communion today, I'm going to invite Julian up. Hey, come and look at what I've got. I've got some bread and some grape juice. Who is it for? Can I have some? Well, certainly you can. But I, but will I let you have some? Please, can I come to the table and eat and drink? Why are you calling Leanne a table? No. <laughs> I guess I'd better tell you the truth. It's not a secret. This table is Jesus' table. And it's here for everyone. You mean the grape juice and the bread are for me too? <laughs> Absolutely. They are a gift from Jesus to you, to me, to everyone. Yahoo! Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Do you know why it's here for anyone and everyone? Why? Because God loves everyone. And God sent Jesus to tell us that. When we share in communion together, we practice loving everyone, just as God loves everyone. And Jesus loves everyone. Wow. Wow, I want to be part of that for sure.
justice to those who are failed. God rest you us our bread. Dear baby, not to repent. Don't do you pray a circuit on God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts to God. We lift them up in thanksgiving and gratitude. Let us give thanks. Let us let us give God our thanks and our praise. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. Can you remember all that God has done over the years? Can you remember why we give God thanks and praise? Let me think. God breathed all creation into being. Filled it with love, making room for cuddles and kisses. Okay. God spoke to people in ancient times, teaching and leading. Even Adam in the garden, Sarah and Abraham on a very long walk of faith, Miriam and Moses wandering in the desert to become the people they were to become, Ruth, Ruth and Naomi growing into families one, women and men prophets now and then who point out God's road signs of faithfulness. With all that help, we must have learned a lot. Not really. For we found ways to found excuses to turn away. We've ignored how God calls us to love as we are love. Guess that means we were punished given a time out. <laughs> you might think that, but God chose another way. You're kidding. Hope God gave us Nope, God gave us Jesus, God's own son. I bet we were in a trouble then. That's what's incredible. Jesus loved us all the way. Jesus chose to die instead of hurting us. How did he love us? On the night on which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and gave thanks and broke it, giving it to the disciples and those he loved. saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. And as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the wine. And after giving thanks, he poured it out. He said, Drink all of this. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. And so, in that room which friends and, with friends and companions, Jesus taught us true love, the, the path we are called to follow. Let's ask God to come and bless what we are about to do. God, come and be with us in the grape juice and the bread. Send your Holy Spirit to breathe on us and into us, giving us deeper understanding and insight that we might live as your people, living others as you love us. Amen. Amen. So now you can have your communion if you brought some. If you don't, I've got extra bread. Who are we? Oh, who are we? Come to the rock, come to the fountain, and all who have sailed on rivers of heartache, come to the sea. Come and heal me, Lord, I will follow where 
Let us join together in a prayer of thanksgiving and joy. You inspired me, God. You took away from me. In the grape juice and in the bread, in the old and the young, coming together around your table, the hunger for your love I once had, the thirst for others to love, to love me just as I am. I know I am loved fully and completely and thoroughly as we face hard truths in a time of reconciliation. Let us face this. Thanks be to God. Amen. And music? Do we have any music? Sure. That 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 well, pretty much concludes this today's uh, service, except for a last song. Is that what we got? Sure. Could I get the singers to come up and join in Holy Lord? If you'd like to stand, if you're able, that'd be cool.
thank you guys for all coming and thank you for bringing your friends and thank you to Chuck and to Adam and to Leanne and Lynn and DL and all those that made this possible and especially Lily Lily's been she I think she's got a frequent flyer miles with Lung and McQuaid uh, so thank you Lily for making sure that we had sound thank you thank you thank you and the Sabbat uh, we have booked the site next Sunday however um, we'll see the new rules come in midweek uh, and and so we shall see we shall see we'll keep you updated and next time uh, feel free to bring your pets uh, there we probably won't do a blessing every week uh, pet blessing but bring your bring your pets and we'll probably do something a little bit more interactive that might not need to depend always on me standing in front of you. So we'll, we'll work on that. Also, if this gets online on YouTube in some shape or form, um, uh, Alice Moore, who passed away about um, over a year ago, uh, her family is, is able now to, to uh, have a memorial, and it will be at the church on uh, October 16th and more information will be uh, posted, but just thought I'd let people know. Okay, thank you everyone. God bless. Hi, my name is Adam Gerhard. I'm the chair of the leadership team. And so concludes our worship, our first in-person worship in months and months and months and months. Uh, and it was wonderful, though not without its interesting challenges. Uh, you uh, probably noticed, and it wasn't just your eyes, that the background video there was out of focus, which was me. Sorry about that. Um, and we had some clippy stuff with the microphones and the speakers, and there were trucks driving by from time to time. And it was wonderful. Uh, it was wonderful to be there. The sky was blue. The leaves were falling. The spirit was moving. It was wonderful. So... Um, this is going to be something we're going to keep trying. We're going to do another outdoor worship service um, next week, hopefully, uh, weather permitting, uh, and we may continue from there. One of the challenges with outdoor worship is the music and the instruments. And so about 10 degrees is where it gets, is the, is the sketchy line uh, where instruments aren't, don't play so well outside. So that's what we're going to be paying attention to. We could very well be out in our snowsuits in the middle of January doing uh, worship. It just would be different and wouldn't have any played instruments. Uh, we are also looking, though, towards indoor worship and what some of the rules and restrictions will be around that. The, the restrictions are changing this week, and we're looking more into what those means. We do know that uh, you will need to be fully vaccinated. The, the leadership team already met and decided that that would be a requirement, uh, but provincial health orders now mandate that. And so if this was a, a conversation point for you, a place of discussion, if you haven't been able to be vaccinated yet, I'd encourage you to go and speak with your medical professionals uh, in your life and, and to get vaccinated. If that's uh, if that's the appropriate uh, choice for you, uh, because that is going to be a restriction for coming to worship. There's going to be a service, uh, service, service. There's going to be a survey about uh, in-person services coming out very shortly, just to get your feedback about how uh, what you need from an from an in-person worship and what some of the worries are for you. Uh, we know lots of folks. Uh, for us, for example, our children aren't fully vaccinated yet because they aren't eligible, and so. Uh, other folks will be in similar boats. There are people that uh, are still um, in vulnerable situations. And so in-person worship presents some challenges. And so we need to understand those a little bit more to make sure the congregation is ready to, to start coming back or enough people in the congregation are ready to start coming back. It will be that. It will mean uh, flipping uh, how we do online worship. Uh, we'll start recording the services very much like today uh, and producing them a a after the worship. So they won't be ready for Sunday morning. They'll be ready for Sunday evening, Monday, sometime during the week, uh, like that. We'll, we'll figure out the rhythm as we get into that. Uh, so they, they, we will be doing this for the foreseeable future, the online worship, but it will start to be uh, driven more by the in-person worship and won't be sort of a primary online uh, production. So with uh, that, uh, hopefully we'll be able to have more folks out next week uh, and to see, to participate in in-person in worship. It is, a, it is wonderful to be together in the worshiping uh, faith community again and um, look forward to seeing you all very soon. Blessings. <laughs>